three BC. Hello, hello. Welcome back to three BC. That's three black chicks. And this is the show as a reminder that's talking about Gen X. It's for us, it's by us, it's about us. We're talking to us, um, not for us, but we're talking to us and with us. And today we have a special guest and he is a writer, a cultural critic, a Prince fan, and he is launching a new show or podcast, Savoir Faire of French Hip Hop. And also I realized, side note, I'll tell you what I realized later. But he's also one sexy motherfucker talking about the next sexy motherfucker, the ultimate sexy motherfucker, I guess I should say. And if you don't get that reference, you should log off now. Hello and welcome to the show, Miles Marshall Lewis. We are talking about the purple one today on the anniversary of his transition. I know there's going to be a there. hey Miles. I know there's going to be a lot of. Uh, tributes pouring in today. So we wanted to do our part as well. So thank you. No doubt. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. You know, as well, we should tribute to Prince, you know, uh, that's my man. Yeah, I mean, actually, Miles, I have to say, I didn't get, it took me a while to put my finger on it, but you um, give me a lot of Prince energy. You give me yeah, Prince was, vibes. Uh, is that I, I, true? I, I tried, you know, I, I shot for that for a long time. Did you time. really? <laughs> like, uh, in high school, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, school in like cashmere coats out of, you know, <laughs> under the cherry moon and stuff like that, you know. That's uh, pretty brave, but... though. That's pretty brave. <laughs> yeah. My, you know, Even my in old, New York City. My grandpa's old cashmere coat, you know. <laughs> Um, and then I, I play piano. I don't really play piano, but I play like maybe eight or 10 Prince songs because uh, I had piano lessons as a kid. And so I picked it back up as a teenager, teaching mm -hmm. myself like beautiful ones and stuff like that. So I could sit in like, you know, the music class in high school and, and kind of sit at the piano and play and, you know, have girls be like, oh my God. So it, um, it works. Yeah. I remember when you played Prince, when you came down to Memphis, you played Prince. You saw a piano. Yeah, you every, play every time I, I see like, a piano. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> so basic. Mm. Yeah, um, no, super yeah, basic. Nah, I love, I love <laughs> Prince. I, you know, I always love his music, and and definitely when it came time to like rehearsing certain things on the piano, um, you know, whether it was uh, God or Scandalous or mm -hmm. uh, Raspberry Beret or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I taught myself those things and. It's like muscle memory, you know, it's still in there, but I don't, I don't, I only play piano when I see one at a party, like when we were together. In yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you got to interview Prince, though. That's a pretty, that's pretty amazing. When Miles was also um, the digital de deputy, digital, I don't know how, I don't ever get titled, but deputy the, it, digital <laughs> editor of Ebony. Is that, that right? Is close enough, close? sure. <laughs> that felt like a tongue I twister. So. I feel like they called me the arts and culture editor, but you know, At some it was, point. Um, oh, yeah, okay. it was four All years right. ago, I guess. I, I think I left oh. Ebony four years ago, but I think it was like eight months before Prince passed away. Uh, I went to Paisley Park. Uh, I got summoned to speak to him and he had a new album coming out and it wasn't supposed to be a Prince interview. They called me there to talk to his producer He'd never had a producer before. So there was mm -hmm. a young guy in his 20s, Joshua Welton, who produced um, the penultimate album that Prince released, you know, the album before the last album. And I went and I talked to Joshua because that's why I was there for like 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. then Prince walked in and I talked to Prince for like over three hours. Wow. And what was that like? Was it like Jamie Foxx described it? Was it like, don't look him in his eyes because you're going to fall in love with him? <laughs> was that's it like funny. that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I, you know, he, it was great. I mean, he gave me a hug, you know. Uh, wow. What did he <laughs> smell know like? Was, you know, yeah, well, what everybody always asked me that. I, I don't remember. Like? There, was, there was nothing particular. I don't know. I didn't, I don't, I didn't sniff the man, you know. I didn't, <laughs> there wasn't like a pervading I would have absolutely aroma. sniffed him. I would have definitely <laughs> sniffed him for sure. I sniffed John Legend one time. He let me do it. Dude. He did. Yeah. Before he was John Legend in all caps. Uh, yes. He yeah. let me do it. I was like, I always yeah. thought you smelled God like bless. baby powder. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't. So, no. But anyway, yeah, I wanted to know. 
Oh, look, I'm so mad. You should really know what he smelled like. Okay. That's but were you well, nervous? I played his piano. <gasps> really? Uh, what yeah, was that like? The interview, How did you feel? Surreal. Well, I asked him for a piano halfway through the interview. And of course, there's like at least five pianos at Paisley Park Studios. Sure. So he was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's through there. And uh, in my head, I was going to like play Prince for Prince. And I was like Ooh. nervous in terms of sitting down and remembering, you know, how the song goes. Because I'm not that great, you know. And uh, I sat down and I played. And it was only like when I was halfway through maybe the cross, that I, I think I was fully through with it, that I realized that he wasn't even there. Like he was like, well, if this guy wants to play piano, you know, I got things to do. So <laughs> he had bounced and I was like, oh damn. So I kind of pulled out my iPhone and I, I recorded, you know, audio of myself, like playing Prince songs on Prince Prince's piano for like five minutes maybe. Then oh, I wow. asked his assistant, you know, like, could you bring him back? You know, like I still had stuff to ask him. But uh, but it was cool. No, but you know, speaking to him was cool. I got there and uh, like I said, I spoke to the other guy for ten minutes, and then Prince walked in. Uh, I was gonna shake his hand, but he gave me a hug and asked, you know, had we met before? Which I heard is sort of a line of his. You know, he kind of says that to people uh, to break the ice. And uh, I didn't have questions prepared for him because it wasn't supposed to have been a Prince interview. So I just sort of went from my heart and asked him all the stuff that I wanted to know about him from you know, being like from the age of 13, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. all the questions that accumulated, you know, my whole life, the stuff I wanted to ask Prince. So I knew that he was skittish about talking about the past. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to delve too deep into like those old albums by the time and Vanity Six mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the protege acts from, you know, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but some of that stuff still crept in. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd heard that the Beautiful Ones, for example, was inspired by uh, his ex-fiance, Susanna Melbourne. And I had asked him, you know, I slipped that in somehow. And he said that it wasn't based on her, that actually it was uh, tailor made for the scene in Purple Rain, the movie where he sort of um, had to battle with Morris Day over the affections in Apollonia. And so it was really like, do you want him or do you want me like specifically for that? That, that scene. scene. Woo, that song yeah, was perfect yeah, for that, that awesome. scene. It and that scene totally was, was amazing. <laughs> that was an yeah, amazing he, thing. He told me he wanted the song to be timeless, like somewhere over the rainbow, you know, which is mm -hmm. interesting because you would never really make the, I would never really make the connection between those two songs. But, uh, but yeah, he wanted like a timeless quality to it and it still holds up, you know, it's from 1984, right? Wow. Yeah. That's a long time. Hey guys, you're listening to 3BC, the interview with Miles Marshall Lewis, writer, author, sexy motherfucker, and <laughs> Prince. Well, thank you. Aficionado. <laughs> so Miles, what if you had a Prince playlist? Like if you did an old school like mm. mixtape, mm. <laughs> like right. you're trying to impress the girl, you're right. giving her a mixtape, or you had, you know, your slow jam <laughs> tape or whatever we uh, did, mix CDs, whatever we did in college. Sure. What would be on it? Like maybe top five. What yeah. would be on that? No, I mean it's, it's funny that you ask that because I made two Prince uh playlists this weekend, you know. I uh, was listening to Questlove's IG Live this weekend, where he spun Prince for hours on Instagram Live, and uh, it Questlove was Questlove like, is everything. I gotta just say yeah. that he's just yeah, he's, he's the man. he is like a savant. Like he can go in the crate <laughs> on anything. Sure, sure. Anything. Yeah, his memory is impeccable. So, mm -hmm. so I made two playlists, and they're full of stuff like. I love Prince's songs like everyone else um, that loves Prince, but it's all about the rarities at this point because mm -hmm. I've heard his regular stuff like a million times, you know, so mm -hmm. I have a bunch of, I don't even know if I should call them bootlegs at this point, but I have like a, a bunch of unreleased recordings like mm -hmm. Questlove does of live things and alternate takes and uh, songs oh, wow. that, uh, you know, just weren't released for one reason or, or another uh, and B-sides and extended versions. So, I mean, to answer your question, I think America would have to be on there. You know, um, America's a song from Around the World in a Day from 1985. But there's like a 21 minute version that was like, oh. uh, <laughs> um, wow. it was a single. And so it was like a 12 inch that where he, the, him, Prince and the Revolution just jam on America for 21 minutes. And then wow. it fades out, which makes clear that like they just continue jamming and we just didn't hear that part, you know. So I like wow. that. Um, what else would be on there? I mean, uh, Controversy's great. 
you know, Kiss is great. I mean, certain hits like that. Uh, Prince had a jazz band called Madhouse, where he plays every instrument except the saxophone. And um, those albums are called Eight and Sixteen. And every song on those albums is like named after a number. So it's like one, wow. two, three. So I would put three on there because three. I'm gonna is like, write that down. Yeah, I did not know that. Song. Three is like a it's a ballad. It's, it's a piano ballad, and it's nice. Oh, uh, eight is great as well. You know. Um, I'm writing so down jazz band. I want. I did not know that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. They're called Madhouse. You know, you'll find it probably on YouTube or something because uh, I don't think that iTunes has sort of re-released. I don't think that was re-released to iTunes. Wow. Like streaming okay. services like Spotify. But um, but yeah, I mean, those are a few of the songs. There's, there's so many. Like Prince recorded like thousands of songs. So even yeah. with my, uh, the playlist that I made, I made two of them and both of them have like seven hours of music because it's just incredible. There's a, wow. um, there was a B-side called 17 Days from the Purple Rain era. I think it might've been the B-side of When Doves Cry. Mm. Uh, you know it if you heard it. 17 Days, though, has like this great live version uh, that I was just jamming on this weekend um, from maybe uh, an appearance Prince made at the First Avenue, which is where mm. Purple Rain was recorded uh, mm -hmm. or filmed. Um, yeah, I think maybe the first time he'd ever played it live is really like a, a high spirited sort of version of it. Um, I like the songs that he's done for other people, like Sheila E and Protege yeah. and Jill Jones. I mean, there's just there's so much, you know? <laughs> you are in love with Sheila E, though. <laughs> a little bit. Well, who wouldn't be? A little. You know? <laughs> yeah, I got to interview her a couple of years ago. You know, there was a time where I was working on a book where I felt that I would write a book about Prince's, um, what is it, his record label. Uh, uh -huh. He had a record label called Paisley Park Records for maybe a stretch of seven years. And uh -huh. he had signed Sheila E and he had signed uh, George Clinton and made the staples and uh, a bunch of other people. And so I spoke to as many of them as I could. And Sheila was definitely somebody I was able to catch up with. It. Um, I think I ran up on her at Essence Magazine and we spoke in a conference room or something, but it was great to talk to her. And yeah, uh, I just read her memoir, um, you know, in preparation for the interview. I'd seen her uh, in my teenage years, like open up for Lionel Richie, I believe. And then I think she played in Atlanta by herself in Piedmont Park, like outdoors, a free show. Uh, she was great. She's a badass drummer. She is. She's one of the baddest in the game, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, so. Regardless, male, female, whatever. She's one of the baddest mm -hmm. in the game. Oh, yeah. um, what else, Miles? What else <laughs> about Prince do you want to talk about before we wrap up? Well, um, it's just maybe my interview, my time with him. I mean, it was it was like talking to a big brother, you know? I mean, like I said, I, I didn't prepare for the interview. I just sort of showed up and he was there and we just talked. Mm -hmm. and he, he gave me a hug and it was warm. And it was like uh, uh, when the, we spoke for hours and there was a song that he kept trying to like sort of uh, tell me that he would send me later. Like his assistant was sitting with us and he was reminding her to email me uh, some song he was talking about that had strings on it. I think we got into mm. a conversation about his old um, passed away string arranger, Claire Fisher, who used to do a lot of stuff for the Rufus and Chaka Khan albums and other things. Mm. And um, at a certain point he was just like, I'm gonna play him the song. I mean, in his head, he didn't tell me that. He was just like, yeah, meet me outside. So in like five minutes. So I, I met him in front of Paisley Park and he like cruised around in like some kind of Cadillac sports car, two door oh, joint. Okay. Okay. And I got in his car and it was like just the two of us in his car. And he was like playing me some album. It turned out to be his last album ever, but some album he hadn't even announced yet that we didn't even know he was working on was like finished already. And um, it was called Hit and Run uh, Part Two, I guess. And he was playing me that. And, you know, like I said, like an uncle in the car, you know, or a big brother, yeah. just like turning up, turning up the value on stuff that he wanted me to really pay attention to and turning yeah. it down and explaining it. And, uh, you know, just a fun time. And then when it was time to get out of the car, uh, there were no handles to get out of the car. <laughs> okay. It was, you know, like, huh. it was too fancy for me. It was like a push button situation where okay. uh, you sort of, you know, like suicide doors kind of thing. Yeah, okay. And so I was like, all right, Prince, so peace. Like, so it's, it's weird to hug in a car. So I think at that point, we had sort of given ha handshakes to each other, but then I couldn't get out of the car because I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I was fumbling mm -hmm. around. I was like, well, so uh, 
yeah, you want to let me out maybe? So he, <laughs> so he laughed because I guess he's been in a situation before and he, you know, leaned over me and he opened the door and, and that was that, you know, but, and I was like, how did you not pee your pants? <laughs> how? I mean, you know, like, I've been doing this for 25 years at least, you know, so like celebrities and celebrity interviews are not really starstruck situations. I grew up in New York as well, and New York is full of celebrities yeah, and so sure. whatever. But I mean, still, for people who were like very important to me at a certain period in my life, like, yeah, it hits you different, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Even meeting somebody like Beyonce, which I have, is not the same to me as meeting Kim Fields, you know. Or, right. Uh, right. Somebody right. Like, uh, That's what I mean. Jenna like Jackson somebody that has that impact on you, or somebody like that. Yeah. yeah you know? But That's what I mean. I mean like, how do you chill? Turn it, yeah, you don't have a choice. It's a job. No, nah, I mean, I've had to handle it, then you, you won't yeah. get a second chance. To, you know, like if he Truth. feels that you have stars in your eyes, then True. you know, it, it has to just be a conversation between, you know, two men. True. On the other side of that, I've, you know, on the PR side of that, I've had to handle people mm. sometimes. I had to handle Idris Elba one time. Well, not, he was, okay. well, the guy, Will Packer was with Idris Elba, mm. and a friend okay. of mine had asked me to handle <laughs> Will. But he was uh -huh. gonna be with Idris. I was like, <laughs> it took me a day of meditation <laughs> to get my shit together. I was like, That's okay, true. do yeah. not fangirl out and <laughs> just freeze, you know. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I did That's pretty funny. good. I did pretty good. Well, yeah, I had bravo. one little tiny. That was the only time I ever felt that. <laughs> like, okay, right, I might so. not be able to keep it together. Uh, feeling. Yeah, I mean, I've been the only dangerous. time. You know, I, I did a cover story on him at some point. I think he was in the Thor movie, the first one. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we caught up, and it was a cool conversation. He DJs as well. Mm -hmm. but, um, he's a good DJ. It, yeah, he's a great DJ. Pretty but good it DJ. wasn't the same situation, you know, between the two of us as it must have been for you. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 no. Um, well, thank you, Miles. I really appreciate you doing this. Um, no, and you know I got your back. You know, I'm glad I to be invited know. on. Thank you. And again, that's Miles Marshall Lewis. Look out for the Savoir Fair of French hip hop. If y'all didn't know, Miles was living the Baldwin life, but you know, with women in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> in Paris, I'm super. Actually, I'm kind of jealous. Um, he did the whole Paris. I saw thing. you over there, though. We we had a good time. I know, but you, you lived through. there. Well, it was a beautiful day, but we you <laughs> got true. to live there and there, stay man. there and do the Paris. Yeah. Thing, and your French is better than mine. So <laughs> there's so, that. There's so, that. Yeah, no, I was there for seven years um, yeah. in my 30s. And um, and the, uh, it's a film that I'm working on, actually. It's called uh, Radical, the Savoir Faire of French Hip Hop. And I'm I sorry, I'm bungling sort of, everything. My bad, Miles. I thought it was not, a show. <laughs> no, it's not a show. It's, a, it's, it's my first movie. I'm a director now. And um, okay. I just completed like a Kickstarter to raise, uh, I guess it was twenty five thousand uh, dollars. I finish saw the film. you raised twenty six. I, uh, I saw. Uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so now I get back to the film, you know, that I started when I was living over there. It's like ninety percent done, and I'm gonna wrap it up with some last minute interviews and post production, and uh, hopefully it'll be out next year. You know. And MC Solar, that was how I was introduced to French hip hop too, as Me well. Too. No, I saw that. MC. I was like, hey, me too. MC Solar. Yeah. Yeah. I, love, yeah, I don't like Jasmine Taz. Americans, probably like, Jasmine Taz. Yeah, Jasmine Taz. With it was probably and, that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, thanks again, Miles. Good thanks, luck sure. on the film. Sorry, y'all. It's not a podcast or a, 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 <laughs> a show. Good luck on the film. <laughs> thank um, you, thank you. And good luck with everything else. Keep writing. We'll keep following. You can follow him on um, Instagram at MML Unlimited. Unlimited. That is correct. Everywhere. And, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Yeah. It's always Snapchat. It's always uh, MML, my initials, Unlimited. Way to brand, Miles. <laughs> good branding. Thanks again, and we'll talk soon. I'll see you in New York. 3BC, recorded at Kazukian Studios. Directed, produced, and distributed by Kazukian. Join the conversation at facebook.com slash 3BC.